Southeastern has upgraded to version 2 of Moodle. This tutorial will give the viewer who is familiar with the prior Moodle version the reasons for the move, along with a brief orientation of the main differences in navigating through your course in the new version. Now let's look at this chart and see why we're moving to Moodle version 2. New Moodle development is on this version. There are also many security fixes, which we want to take advantage of. And version 2 has better browser support. That means it works well with Chrome. And the previous Moodle had some limitations on the Chrome browser. Here are some new features that we'll show you in this tutorial. But I'll go over them real quickly now. Dock is a new thin area at the left pane, which you can customize to hold blocks for a quick access and for a cleaner look to your screen. There's also a universal file repository per professor so there's no need to maintain a copy of of common files that you use across courses in every class. You can just have one copy and use it across your classes. File picker is easier to use than the than the previous one. Uh, one quick method you can drag and drop from either the file manager or from des your desktop and you can even drag files right into the week of a course and if you don't need to change anything else it's there in, in just a second. There's also the activity chooser pop-up that lets you select from both activities and resources instead of having two different pull-downs. Now let's take a look at how a new course appears in Moodle 2 and what some of the differences are from the old version. Here's an over under screen comparison with the old on top and the new on the bottom. This is the look of a newly created course where nothing has been added. Other than different fonts and spacing and some different positions of the blocks in the left and right sides, they're quite similar when you're not in edit mode. You will also see that the rest of the blocks on the left and right contain most of the same functions. There are a couple of exceptions. We're going to talk about those shortly here. But you may find the functions operate in a slightly different manner. Other tutorials will show the details of using these functions. One useful block is the activities block, which shows any activities that have been added to the course. You can move the block where you want by dragging it when you see the plus sign at the top. Here's an activities block for an active existing course. As you add new activities like assignments, forums, quizzes, etc., those types will appear in the activities block so they can be selected by course users. When a user selects an activity type, all of those activities will appear together on one screen, rather than being dispersed among the weeks. Another personalization feature which will simplify the look of the left and right panes is the new dock function. When you have editing turned on, you will see a little rectangle at the top right of every block. This lets you move a block to the dock, which is a thin section on the very left of the course homepage that shows up when you've moved something there. One block you may want to move to the dock is the navigation block, which shows a long list which includes your courses and the weeks in the current course. This takes up a lot of space, but if you click the little rectangle to move it to the dock, you will see the navigation block appear in the dock. Just the word navigation appears. Hovering over it shows it in an expanded view, showing the courses and the weeks of the course, enabling you to navigate where you want by just clicking whichever link you want there. Getting the navigation block onto the dock cleans up the look of the left block area. Your dock customization only affects your screens not your students or anyone else. Now let's compare the pages from the old and new versions while editing is turned on. You can see that the new version is cleaner looking without the two pull downs in every week. 
These have been replaced by the Activity Chooser, a link which only appears when you hover your mouse over the, a particular week. Clicking the link brings up the Activity Chooser pop-up window, which has selections for all the activities and resources that can be added to the week. When you click one of these, on-screen help for that function appears in the right side of the chooser. And to add a function, just click the Add button once the function is selected. This will take you to the settings page for that function where you will see similar screens to the older version. There will be more tutorials on the details of setting up the more commonly used functions in these screens. Now I will add a function to a week to show what that looks like. As I mentioned, most of the functions have setting screens similar to the prior version of Moodle. One notable change is the new drag and drop method for adding files to a week. If you use the activity chooser and select file, you will still see the controls for selecting the file to be loaded into the week. The add button lets you navigate to a file on your computer to add to the week. This function page also has a drag and drop area you can use to drag files from your computer's file manager or your desktop. This can be a quick method of adding one or several files if you're using a mouse, but it may be a little more cumbersome when using a laptop's finger pad. Or for the file function, you can bypass the activity chooser altogether and drag and drop files directly into any week. To briefly show this, I will open the file manager, which is in Windows Explorer or in the case of a PC, and navigate to the folder that has the file or files I want to put on Moodle. I can select a single file or hold the control key down and select multiple files. Then with both the Explorer and the Moodle class window showing, I simply drag the files to the week I want. Ignore the hover box that says move because it will just copy the files and leave the originals on your PC. Instantly the files appear in the week. If you don't want to make any changes to the settings like the file name, you're done. If you do want to make some setting changes, simply hover the mouse over the file and the controls will appear. The pencil tool will only let you edit the file's title. The wrench tool will take you to the settings screen for the file, enabling you to change all the settings, including the dates for when the file is visible to students. You can see that this drag and drop vastly simplifies the process of copying files to a week. Now let's take a look at the new Private Files function, which allows you to build up a set of files that you can select from any of your courses, not just the one you're in at the moment. Note that the earlier sections of this tutorial about using the file section of the Activity Chooser or the drag and drop to a week add files to your course files, not your private files. Now let's take a look at how to get to My Private Files. There are a couple of methods. The first is to go to your navigation, click My Profile, and then click My Private Files. This will open up the My Private Files window. You would see any private files that you have there. This user has none at this point. Now the other method to get there is to go back to your course and then make sure editing is turned on and then go down to the bottom of the left pane and you'll see add a block. In there you can find my private files. When you click that you will add a block to this course at the bottom here that has my private files in it. So that block will appear in the course every time you go there. Now if you click the manage my private files button you get back to the my private files screen. To add new files to your private files, click the Add button. Note that you can organize your private files into folders by using the Create Folder button. 
You can either navigate to the files you want or drag and drop files as I showed you earlier into the file field. Again, you can hold down the control key to select multiple files. Any files you add to private files will appear in all of your courses, both in the My Private Files block and in the Files Activity Chooser, where you can select private files. From the File Chooser, select File and Add, and then add your name and description, and go down and click the Add button, and then you'll see on the left there's Private Files versus Upload a File, which is the uh, local course files. So this private files are a great way to add a file and have it appear available to all of your courses. That's our overview of the new Moodle version 2. For more details on how to do specific functions like creating an assignment, adding a quiz, or adding grades, see the Moodle 2 tutorials or playlists for detailed help. Thank you.